Our apartment in Madrid is in the oldest part of the city, in a neighborhood called La Latina. It is on the ground floor of a former dorm for priests when they used to come to Madrid. It is a building from the 18th century that was totally redone in the 1980s. We found the apartment totally by chance. We were walking down the street one day without having planned that we wanted to move. I suddenly saw a sign on a piece of paper. We contacted the owner. The owner happened to have another apartment that we did not like. And then all of a sudden she had this flash of inspiration and she said, oh, let me show you something else. We walked in and immediately we knew it had to be here. We live a very simple life in this apartment. Well, we live a very simple life in general, but we find this apartment particularly soothing and particularly calm. It does feel in many ways like stepping into a small country cottage, very Mediterranean, very island-like, um, in the middle of a city of Madrid because of the vaulted ceilings and because of the, of the clay tiles on the floor. It does have a certain rural feel to it, which we like very, very much. When we decorate for us, sometimes we feel like it's all about context. We take that very seriously. In this case, we try to preserve the monk-like and the Mediterranean atmosphere, the combination of clay tiles on the floor and whitewashed walls with vaulted ceilings. We would play with the decoration pieces um, so that they don't interfere with what we consider to be the most important feature of the apartment, which is monastic architecture. There really is no decoration project in our home, or at least there's no decoration project as, as we do for our clients. It's basically our books and then some objects, little small items that we bought here and there over the years that have found a place. Honestly, there's not much thought um, behind a lot of the decoration ideas in, in our apartment. It is in many ways much more casual. The big, well, we would say fixture that we have in the middle of our dining living area, it's actually a big, big bunch of wild oat that we collected from a big field in the province of Segovia, north of Madrid. We were simply driving one day. We loved the color. It was quite tall. We decided to load as much as we could. And then at home, we basically tied it up into a bundle, put it upside down. And this is what's hanging in the middle of our, of our living room. The kitchen is very, and feels very rural to us. Sometimes when we're in the kitchen, we really feel like we're in the middle of a village rather than in the heart of a 5.5 million people city. The um, apartment is on a semi-pedestrian square, so it's very quiet all year. We hardly ever, or I would say we never entertain at home <laughs> because the apartment is in the middle of Madrid and there are so many cafes and restaurants and bars around. Very often we, we like to fool ourselves and we think that, oh, yeah, Probably next Saturday or next Sunday, we're going to have friends over and we'll cook for them. But somehow it never happens. Our showroom is in the Rastro area in Madrid, which is the flea market. The flea market takes place on Sundays, but our shop is open every day. And we have a small selection of pieces, mainly from France and from Italy, mainly 20th century design pieces. Both Inigo and I are art historians and we, we don't specialize in a specific period or we don't source the big names and we're not so much into collecting pieces because of the value that they may have in the future, but we source and select the things that catch our eye. And uh, based on our criteria, this is what uh, we have in our in our showroom. Our showroom is also the place to meet with clients and um, to discuss their projects and for clients to get, a, to get an idea of um, the type of pieces that we could use in their projects when we use vintage pieces. And at the same time, we have in our, um, in our shop, in our showroom, we have pieces that we design. We've designed a collection that we named Weekend um, some chairs, some lamps, and we also have a collection of textiles that we design. So what one can find in our shop is a mix 
of 20th century pieces designed from Italy and from France and also our signature pieces. Last year, all of a sudden, we got an email from the Prado Museum, the most important museum of painting in Spain and, and one of the top three museums in the world. And they had never commissioned any architect or decorator to do rethinking and a redecoration of one of their facades. They contacted us, they say they liked our, our work and our ideas, and we could do anything. We chose one of the main entrances on the top floor, and because it was a spring and because there was an exhibition on Baroque art at the time, we decided to do a floral installation, and we decided to turn a neoclassical, very austere looking, very linear, very geometry-based design facade into something much more lush, gilded, rich, baroque. We found inspiration on some paintings that the Prado Museum has, specifically a painting by Rubens, where we see columns that have a shape similar to the columns that we created with flowers. There were 25,000 dehydrated hydrangeas, and there was also 50,000 branches that were dipped in gilded paint. We wanted this, this facade to look very artificial, as Baroque art is, but at the same time based on nature. And we wanted, in a way, as it happens in Baroque art, to fool the eye, to make a floral material look like it's an artificial floral material. And at the same time, we wanted it to look like it was made by humans when it really is a plant. But the way it is displayed was meant to look like it is architecture rather than just the natural shapes. There are a few pieces that we like and that we keep for sentimental reasons, really, almost as if they are our amulets. Um, one of them was a present that was given to us by, by an antique dealer in France. It's the sun. It is gilded and we really love it and have it in a central place in our home because of the message that it has. It is a blessing and the blessing is may life bring joy, 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 joy. And the word joy, joie in French, is everywhere in the piece. It's difficult to find anything that's more positive. That's really something that, well, I would say we want to be blessed with. A lot of joy all the time. Joy and good surprises. When we raise a toast, that's what we always do. To joy and to great surprises. Don't miss another video visit. Click on the orange cue to subscribe and have Quintessence virtually delivered from our doorstep to yours.